Howdy ho viewers and welcome to the start of a Pokemon Fire Red playthrough I've decided to do. But it's not going to be any ordinary Pokemon Red pl Fire Red playthrough. I, re I recently came across a few things and I've decided to uh, undertake what's called the Nuzlocke Challenge. Which is a kind of a set of rules that you follow to make the playthrough more difficult. But I thought... Yes, whilst it makes it difficult, you're ultimately still playing the same game. So I thought I'd switch it up a notch and decided to crack open the Universal Pokemon Randomizer, which randomizes and changes a lot of aspects of the game. So what we're going to do first is load up my ROM, if I can find it. <laughs> External, yes, now... Uh, yes, be under software, under games, do do do. Lots of stuff here. Pokemon collection, I guess. ROMs, of which I have a fair few, as you can see. Okay, yep, Fire Red USA, yeah, we can deal with that. Okay, so, yep, that's loaded up. Okay, right, Pokemon base statistics. Uh, yeah, we'll leave the statistics themselves unchanged. When this is selected, everyone's Pokemon's XP curve will be the following. Break trade compatibility with ROMs? I'd imagine it'll break most of it already. But no, I'm going to leave that as it is. Pokemon's abilities will also leave unchanged. Random follow evolutions. Oh yes, you can have Pokemon that evolve to other random Pokemon. Bizarre. <laughs> Change impossible evos. Uh, yes, I'm going to have that on. So it's possible to get Pokemon that you'd normally have to evolve by trading. Okay, starters, statics and trades. Starter Pokemon, we're going to randomize completely uh, yes randomized starter held items no I'll keep bad, bad items off static Pokemon uh, define static Pokemon please Oh, that must mean, yeah, free standing ones. All right, we'll leave those unchanged, and we'll leave in-game trades also unchanged. Right, moves and move sets. Yeah, I'm going to get the ROM randomised and prepped, then I'll go over the rules I'll be following for this challenge slash series. Randomised move pad, no, we don't want to do that. It does not add fairy type. No, I'll leave all those off. Yep, keep those as they are. Trainer Pokemon. And give them random Pokemon in that type. Now, I tried this on a previous version ROM. It seemed to completely throw it off course. Randomised trainers Pokemon completely. Eh, yeah, screw it. Type themed it is. Want to change things up. Rival carry starter throughout the game. Uh, yes, I think we'll have that, because he does that normally anyway. Tried to use Pokemon with similar strength. No. Weight types by number of Pokemon with them. A number of trainers. Each up will roughly match up with a number of Pokemon of that type. Nah, we'll leave that off. Ah, this is having other po other trainers not use legendaries. No, I'll keep that off. Randomised trainer names and class names. No, no sense in doing that. Right, wild Pokemon. Completely randomised. This should mean there are many different Pokemon in each area. Area 1 to 1 mapping. Handful of random Pokemon. Every place has a certain... Every place a certain Pokemon appears in, it will be replaced by another set Pokemon. So, ideally, we want random. Now, does it keep the same number of random Pokemon in the area? Mind you, if I'm doing the Nuzlocke Challenge, that will be quite good. 
Yeah, we'll do that. Additional rule, don't apply other rules. Similar strength. Similar power of the original. Nah. Catch them all mode. Every random Pokemon chosen to replace an encounter from one that hasn't been caught before. That makes sure every Pokemon's catchable. Well, that's not necessarily what we're going for here. Type theme area. If this is chosen, every encounter area will only have Pokemon of a random type. It may lead to a more realistic experience or an odd one. Nah, we'll keep it on random. Don't use legendaries. No, we want to keep that off. Because the because the first time I was uh, playing around with the mod, the first ROM I made, first encounter in the first era after leaving Pallet Town, Wild Zapdos. <laughs> you gotta love it sometimes. Set minimum catch rate. This is selected. Every Pokemon in the game with a catch rate below a certain level have its rate increased. Uh, well, given what given one particular rule in the Nuzlocke challenge, I'm going to have that on. And I'll explain why later. Randomised held items? Uh, no, I'll leave that off in this case. TMs and HMs? Yeah, we'll leave them unchanged. Field items? Yeah, we'll leave those unchanged. Uh, running shoes indoors? The game's catching tutorial, I don't see that how, how that's of any relevance. Give national decks at start. Right, if this is checked, national decks will be given to the player at the start, right? It's only available and necessary for Gen 3 games, which this is. Where in Fire, Red or Leaf Green, national decks Pokemon can't be evolved if you don't have it. So I can catch... Uh, other non-Kanto region Pokemon at the start, I just can't evolve them. Okay. Lowercase Pokemon names. Uh, yes, we'll have that, I think. Uh, what was I looking for? Oh, yes, possibility of uh, locking down Pokemon to generations. Nope. I guess that's okay. Actually, I'll turn randomised starter held items off. Okay, settings... Doo -doo -doo. Ah, yes, generation rules, it's right here. Race mode? What's that? Oh, it's a speed run, but I'm not doing a speed run. Right, what options are available? Include Pokemon from generation 1, 2 and 3. Won't work correctly with ROM hacks that change available Pokemon or add new ones. Mm. Well, the thing is, if I turn that on, then it's always going to be like that. So no, I'll have that off. Okay, I think we've got everything we need done, so let's save settings there. Oh no, not randomization, quick settings. Uh, we actually want to save the ROM. Now, how do we do that? Should be able to do this, I've done it before. Randomize safe, there we go. Right, now I want to save it where I put all my other ROMs. Ah! Stop pissing about with that. Nope, I want to go in there, thank you. Right, Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon collection, there we are. And we'll call it Fire Red V3. Yeah, so V1 was the first try when I got the Zapdos first time out. V2 was a playthrough of my own that I'm working through. Actually, no, we'll call it Fire Red Nuzlocke. Ah! Can't spell for shit today. Okay, save. Do you want to save a log file of the randomization? No, we don't. Okay, successfully randomized. There's the random seed and everything, if everyone, if anyone wants to follow my example. Okay, done there. Okay, now we're going to go to Rules of the Nuzlocke Challenge. There are some... I've looked it up on the Bulbapedia wiki, 
I'll include a link somewhere to it, that outlines some basic rules that have to be followed for it to be considered a Nuzlocke challenge and optional rules that you can add in as well. Let's go through the core rules first. Any Pokemon that faints is considered dead and must be released or put into the storage system permanently. So let's just type that in. Any Pokemon that faints is considered dead and must be released or stored permanently. I can't English. Permanently. It's close enough, okay? <laughs> okay, the player may only catch the first Pokemon in each area. In encountered in each area. If the first Pokemon faints or flees, there are no second chances. If we encounter a double battle in Dark Grass, don't think that applies in Fire Red, so that's all good. Right, so, may only catch first Pokemon in each area. Okay. While not exactly a definite rule, the general consensus is that players must also nickname their Pokemon for the sake of forming a closer bond with them. I will be following that rule. Must nickname Pokemon. I'll most likely be naming them after characters from certain animes that I watch. Most likely it's going to be Data Live and Monster Mercer Makers. They're the two that I like the most at the moment. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Also not a definite rule, but a general consensus is that a black or white out is considered game over. I will also be following that rule. White out equals game over. So this is a permadeath run as well, in essence. Okay. Strongly implied, but not explicitly mentioned in the comic. It's a Nuzlocke comic, I suppose. It's the stipulation that the player can only use Pokemon they have captured themselves, so Pokemon that are traded or given through mystery gifts are not allowed. As of White Hard Mode Episode 3, it's implied that players can accept Pokemons that are received from NPCs. Okay. So, how are we going to write that down? <laughs> Can only use self caught Pokemon except except ah except when received from NPCs. Okay. Also strongly implied is a prohibition against voluntarily resetting and reloading the game when things go wrong. Being able to do so would render all the other rules pointless. Right. This was slightly contentious for me at the start because even though I levelled out the capture probability, particularly with legendaries, they can still be an arse to catch, particularly early on when the number of Pokeballs you have is limited, but I will nonetheless be following that rule. So this is going to include resetting the uh, emulator, reloading a save game, and also the use of save states. So, no resets, reloads, except except for when I've come to the end of an episode, of course. No resets, reloads, or save states. Okay, right, those are the core rules. Now we're going to look at some of the optional rules. Okay, starter Pokemon is based on the trainer's ID number. Um, I'm going to go with no. We may we may well not have that option because I've completely randomised the starters. So no, we won't be following that. These are optional rules. Uh, let's see. Species dupe clause. Adjusting the first encounter rule to prevent a player catching multiple of the same Pokemon. Uh, yes, I'm going to uh, include that. So species slash dupes clause. Yeah, 
I'll just leave it at that. I should know what I mean. Because I'm going to save this and refer back to it if there are any contentious issues that crop up in the game. Okay. Not, ofi not officially enforcing the rules until the player has Pokeballs and can catch Pokemon. Um... Likewise, in games where the rival battle is immediately after getting the startup, which it is in Fire Red. Sorry if I'm not reading this all out in detail, but you've probably got the Nuzlocke wiki page open and are looking through these much faster than I am. And are probably screaming in your head saying, Get a move on! We want to see some action. I'm getting to it. <laughs> not officially enforcing the rules until, until player has Pokeballs and can catch Pokemon. No, that doesn't apply. Right, I won't be following that. It's going to be from the beginning. Use the same amount of Pokemon as the opponent during a gym battle or rival battle. I won't be following that, given that the difficulty will be upped, particularly with Pokemon being randomised. Going to options and making the battle style set, leaving the player unable to switch out. Well, no, I'm not doing that, because... Uh, AI or NPC trainers can do that. Releasing starter Pokemon as soon as the first wild Pokemon has been caught? Hell no. <laughs> Need some means of survival. Banning the use of potions and healing items relying only on Pokemon centers for healing and vice versa. Right, I'm going to say... Hmm. I'm going to say Pokemon centers only for healing for status effects... Healing items are allowed. So I'm going to put that in. Oh, no. I'll put in only use items for... for uh, there, there, there. Sorry, I can't English. Uh, only use healing items for status effects. Or status effects. Uh, not including KO or fainting because that runs contrary to one of the core rules. Except KO slash faint. Okay. Uh, limiting Pokemon Center visits to a certain number per town. Well, no, I'm not going to do that in case I need to grind. So I won't be doing that. Banning the use of held items? Well, no, because I think enemy Pokemon can have those as well. Limiting number of Pokeballs to purchase per Pokemart. I also won't be following that in case I find legendaries. Banning the use of Master Balls. Now, given that I've leveled that up... Well, I'm only going to get one Master Ball, so no, I, I won't be following that. <laughs> Rather than releasing the Pokemon, it can be permanently boxed, migrated, or transferred with Poke Transfer should it happen to faint. Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, I could. Well, I could have certain boxes in the storage system specifically reserved for fainted Pokemon. So yes, I'm going to follow that, even though it is implied in one of the core rules. So, fainted Pokemon to be stored. Okay. Player may not evolve captured Pokemon, but evolved Pokemon may be caught. Screw that noise! <laughs> not doing that. Turning the difficulty onto challenge mode if playing black 2 and white 2. Doesn't apply to me. No catching or lo using legendary Pokemon. Hell no. As a mercy rule allowing 1 to 3 second chances or revives of fallen team members. Won't be doing that. Want to keep this challenging. Uh, as another mercy, mercy rule, if the player runs into a shiny Pokemon, the player may still catch it, regardless of whether or not it's the first p encounter in the area. Now, I'm not sure if shiny Pokemon even happen in Fire Red. 
I've read up on it, it can happen in Generation 3 games, which Fire Red is. So I don't know if that can happen or not, but nonetheless I'll be following that in case they do appear. So Shiny Pokemon... Actually, we'll call it... The Sh it's called the Shiny Claws, isn't it? Tell me I'm right. Do, 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 do. Yeah, Shiny Claws will be following that. Oh, uh, come on, where are we? As another mercy rule, each gym badge acts as a checkpoint. So if the player gets a game over, they can start from when they got their previous gym badge. That would involve using save states. Well, that would be the only way you could really do it, surely. No, I won't be following that. If the player has no Pokemon that can use a certain field that is required to continue through any given point of the game, they may catch another Pokemon that can learn said field move. However, it cannot be used in battle for any reason and must be released or stored as soon as the player gets another Pokemon that can use said field move. So basically, an HM slave. <laughs> but yes, I think we will be going that with that just in case the random order of encounter Pokemon cocks me over. So if field move is there required another Pokemon may be caught for it. but must be released slash stored Ooh. excuse me, a bit knackered today <laughs> another Pokemon may be caught for it but must be released or stored as soon as another Pokemon another Compatible Pokemon is caught. Okay. Uh, modifying the first, modifying the first encounter only rule for the Safari Zone. Sometimes allowing one encounter for each area, or until I catch one Pokemon in the entire area. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that means. Sometimes allowing one encounter for each area. Or until they can't... When they say the entire area, does that mean the entire safari zone or each area of the safari zone? I'm going to say one in, one in each area of the safari zone. Because for me, catching any Pokemon in the safari zone is an arse. Okay. Banning the use of Pokemon? No, we need Pokeball, goddammit! <laughs> there are too few that can be found in the wild. Disallow fleeing. Uh, let's think. Well, it's only going to be random Pokemon. Uh, let's think. If I were to encounter a legendary, that could cock me over. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to say fleeing only allowed for random legendaries. Or randomly encountered legendaries. Okay. Setting a level limit based on next gym leaders or champion's highest level Pokemon. I don't know all those by memory, and sometimes a little bit of overleveling is pretty much required for victory, so I won't be following that. Banning Pokeballs entirely. Any Pokemon obtained must be given to the player or hatched from an egg. Well, that doesn't really go for Fire Red, so no. 
banning the use of daycare to breed all level up Pokemon. I hardly ever use the daycare anyway. Turning off EXP share, fair enough, but given that I'll be doing the old bit of levelling up or grinding possibly off camera, that rule's kind of null and void, but nonetheless I'll be following that. No EXP share. I might obtain the item at some point, I just won't use it. Banning use of certain features that make the game easier. Again, that doesn't imply apply to Fire Red. So, that's our rule set prepared, and that's our ROM prepared. Next episode will be when I actually start playing the game. So, thanks very much for watching quite boring first episode I know but we'll be starting next time and it could be quite interesting from the get-go so tune in next time or for the next episode and goodbye